You're in a good mood tonight, and that's good, because any time a young comedian appears on The Tonight Show uh, for the first time, it's, it's important to his career. And uh, he works on the, on the comic strip in New York, in the comic strip, or on the comic strip. Yeah. yeah. One or the other. And he's co-starring in a new movie called Diner, which is opening around the country currently. Would you make him... <laughs> would you make him... <laughs> si, senor. Would you, would you welcome Paul Reiser. Paul... Thank you very much. This is uh, very exciting. It really is just coming out to Hollywood and first time on The Tonight Show. Uh, I'm still a bit nervous, I'll be honest with you, and maybe you are too. Uh... Let me ask you honestly, how many of you would really rather skip this and go for coffee? Anybody at all? Because <laughs> we could get a booth. It's been done, seriously. No, I, I feel good. I have a, a whole new outlook on life. I, I think I've matured. I've grown up. You know, I finally realized something that your health is not important as long as you have your material goods. Um, <laughs> it's just the way I feel. You know, I could be in the hospital with a fever and a whooping cough, but if I've got just a few Japanese products that work, I'm a happy guy, you know. <laughs> You've got to enjoy your life, folks. Right? Some people worry a little bit too much. I was visiting my parents recently. Do you know my folks? No, all right. My, my father, this is absolutely true. My father is, is, he has a new hobby now. He's got a winter hobby that he enjoys. It's called walking around the house and shutting off the heat for no reason. Uh, the man shuts off, he, it's freezing, but see, he really believes that if he cuts down his oil bills, then starting tomorrow, America's gonna stop importing from the Middle East. You know, it's a great sentiment. It's a nice responsibility. I just... I don't know if one person is going to turn around the economy, you know. I don't think the prince of Saudi Arabia is up in his office going, well, I don't believe this. It's that same guy in New Jersey again. <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> Haji, Fasil, come in here, look at this. Remember last year with the living room lights? Now it's no heat in the hallways with this guy. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's, it's just people are so funny. I was out driving out here about three days ago, about four or five days ago, be, be about two and a half years ago, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> Wanna know something? This never even happened. I'm making this up. I'll be quite honest with you. <laughs> I don't know why I'm lying. You're nice enough people. Uh, no, I still get lost out here. I'm not quite that comfortable. And I don't know what it is, but I always manage to get directions from the worst people in America. I don't know how I find them. You ever stop somebody who looks normal? And then halfway through the directions, you start thinking to yourself, this guy is an idiot altogether. He's, he's got no idea where he is or who he is. He's breathing in my face. Get out of my car. You gotta be careful. Some people, listen, some people will give you directions which if you actually followed, you would die. You will kill yourself. You ever hear this one? Listen, buddy, the road is gonna curve, but you go straight. I don't know about that one. I got news for you. If that road curves, I'm going with it. I figure it's curving for a good reason, like a cliff. You know what I mean? Something. I'll tell you, basically, you should stay away from two types of people when getting directions. Always the worst. Little kids and very old people. You know, between five and 95, you've got a shot. It's for different reasons. See, little kids, in all fairness, little kids don't drive. All right, which is why, by the way, I think they don't get good jobs. <laughs> I think the figure speaks for itself. Uh, think about it, even if they got a job, if the next day they don't show up, who's gonna hire them again? You know, just... No, kids are nice, they're honest. They'll give you honest directions that do you absolutely no good. You know, it's like, hey, uh, kid, how do you get to the stadium? My father takes me, he's like, oh. <laughs> They just don't know. See, now, the old guys are worse because they don't know that they forgot. <laughs> see, they used to know, they really did, but not anymore. And the problem is, see, they love talking to you, so they will take their time, they'll just stall, say, 
What do you want, the stadium? All right, okay. The stadium. The stadium, all right. What, are you going to a ball game? All right, okay, listen to me. Your best bet. Now, what you want to do... No, that's no good either. I'm trying to think of the best way for you. Apparently, they have custom-made directions now. It's the best way for you. I said, sir, give me the way you're giving everybody else, sir. Don't start over. See, they overdo it. They want to be nice, but they give you too much. They'll give you landmarks. They tell you about things you're never even going to see. And you're trying to memorize it. He goes, listen, kid, if you go this way, you'll see an overpass, there's a high school, there's a factory, you'll see there's a train station, there's a garbage pail, there's a fat guy, you'll see. There's a Howard Johnson's, there's a Wendy's, there's a dry cleaner, a laundromat, and a college, okay? You don't want that. I said, if I don't want that, what do you tell? I'm telling you in case you miss it, but don't worry, you can't miss it. You can't, that's the worst thing to ever say to somebody who's lost. You can't miss it, cause now there's pressure. <laughs> and nine times out of 10, you can miss it. You will miss it. And sometimes it was never even there. Just a bunch of guys going, who did you talk to, the old guy? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Good shot.